Hey everyone, I'm Ryan, you're watching 60 Cycle Hum, and this is the only fuzz I have ever hated in my entire life. I hate this thing. This is the DoD flashback fuzz, the FX66. Don't go look it up, don't buy it. Uh, I bought one of these years and years back because I was curious. There's a lot of fantastic DoD pedals out there. And every fuzz has merit, right? Every fuzz is beautiful and good in its own way. So I bought this thing. I did a quick video of it years back. And it was just like, man, this sucks. I don't like this at all. Recently, I've been seeing people post them and be like, oh, what do you guys think of these? I've got one. I like it. I'm like, How? How could anyone like one of these? So I did pretty much the most vindictive thing I've ever done as a guitar YouTuber. I bought another one just to show how bad this pedal truly is. I'm gonna spend some time showing it off, making sounds with it, and then I'm not just gonna leave you hanging with the bad sounding pedal. I'm gonna show you a pile of fuzz pedals that I think of as affordable. The most expensive one is 155 bucks, but I'm gonna shoot out all of these affordable fuzz pedals against the flashback. Just to show that I'm not some kind of, you know, expensive fuzz snob or something like that. There are pedals out there that sound great and don't cost a lot of money. All right, the guitar I'm gonna play today is the Nutter Astro Captain. This thing's so damn beautiful, isn't it? So freaking cool. I haven't played it in a while, so I've been missing it. All right, here is my clean tone. That's important, right? You need to know what this guitar and my amps sound like before I just smash them with a gigantic wall of crushing fuzz. It's important stuff, right guys? Anyways, here's a G chord. There you go, and that's all you need to know. And here is the flashback fuzz. Are you ready? <laughs> Nasty and nasal. And thin and brittle. It sounds like there's a good fuzz underneath it, but somewhere in the circuit, there's this like cocked, wah, ridiculously tweaked EQ thing happening. And it just ruins the whole thing for me. It's probably great if you just need a standalone effect, like you're only gonna use it every now and then for this sort of thing. Or like Brian May sounds or something like that. It sounds like an out of phase guitar running through a cocked wah into a fuzz pedal. I think it's a momentary, every now and then sound effect, like lo-fi megaphone sort of sound. Yeah, it's fine. But I don't, yeah, I'd rather just put an EQ pedal after a fuzz I like, or a cocked wah after a fuzz I like, than dedicating space on a pedal board to a fuzz that sounds terrible otherwise. I'm gonna rack through the knobs now. <laughs> I can't say that I dialed in a sweet spot, but I can't say I don't think there's really any actual sweet spots on this thing. The low knob is a bit of a saving grace for it. It does make it feel heavier to contrast against that nasal, nasal out of phase sound. I have no idea why it's called the flashback fuzz 
either. Like, what is this a flashback to? It doesn't remind me of any like vintage 60s style fuzz. Honestly, when I saw the graphics the first time and I was reading reviews on it, I was expecting a super fuzz. I was expecting like a tweaked out fuzz face, an octave fuzz, something like that. I was not expecting an out of phase cocked wah fuzz. Okay, we'll go through the range of the tone control now. You'd think that that would help a lot, the tone control, we'll see. You know, if there was a knob that controlled that cocked wah sound that let me scroll or sweep through the wah, then that might be something. But the tone control doesn't do that. Ooh, that is brittle. It's the same cocked wall sound across the range of all the knobs. I honestly wonder if someone could identify um, the portion of the circuit that's making that sound. I could bypass it with a mod switch or something like that. Because the actual like grit of the fuzz sounds fun. I think right about there is probably the most normal, in air quotes, normal sound. Maybe I should put up a photo of the guts. I'll take care of that later. I'll open it up and take a photo and I'll put it up right now. You guys can screen grab it and circuit people out there. You can try to figure out what part of the circuit is making that awful nasal sound. <laughs> Alright, last knob worth exploring, the fuzz control. Turn it all the way up. And it gets really light. I'm not gonna judge. If you've got one of these and it's your secret weapon, it's the key to your special tone. Um, good for you, great for you. I just, I don't have any use for this other than a random novelty sound every now and then. Um, but I've said since the beginning of all this, since even before having a podcast and the YouTube channel and whatnot, um, there's, it's, a, it's a philosophy of mine. There's no such thing as bad or good tone. There's appropriate and inappropriate tone. So if this is appropriate for your mix, more power to you, that's great, fantastic. Uh, but personally for me, I don't have any use for that. <laughs> and I certainly can't recommend it unless you really truly do need an out of phase, cocked wah, nasal sounding fuzz, because that's what it is. So let's get started with the affordable fuzzes that I actually like. Um, let's start with the most expensive one. I'm assuming it's the most expensive one. I've got the Half Horse here by, uh, by uh, Pelican Noise Works. Then following that, I have the Tysco Fuzz. Uh, this is a 155. I think these are like 140, 150, something like that. 
followed by the contraband. I think also in the one, like 35 to 140 range. I could be getting these prices all wrong. Uh, the JHS Fuzz recently came out and the Carcosa by DOD, a redeeming Fuzz from DOD, both $100, even I think usually. Maybe sometimes these are 120, but I bought mine for $100. And then two affordable board Fuzzes, the Cuvave and the Rowan Frenzy. Two Fuzzes that sound very close to each other, but are not identical. So let's start with the half horse. All right, I've done something um, a little bit necessary here. I've routed both pedals through the Switchblade Pro by Electro Harmonics. Allowed me to isolate them so I'm not feeding one fuzz into an unbuffered or buffered situation. Things can get weird that way. I'm also not stacking uh, white noise and grounding issues because I am having that right now. It's a hot, dry, static heat day. So let's get into it. We'll start again with the flashback fuzz and then compare it to the Pelican Noise Works half horse. <laughs> flashback. You know, it's really a shame because I think there's a good fuzz in the flashback. It's just being squished to death by whatever just nasal cocked wah filter is over the whole thing. It's fine to have these nasal, ridiculous, just out there sounds with fuzzes. I love that. I love ridiculous sounding fuzzes. Carcosa coming up next. Uh, <laughs> but squishing it, putting the filter over the fuzz, I think is a major mistake. It's plenty crazy. Oh, ridiculous. Carcosa. You are a spooky, freaky fuzz. One of the most ridiculous, crazy, while also being versatile, affordable fuzzes out there. Like I said, I think I bought mine for 99 bucks. They might go for 120, 130 these days. I don't remember. I haven't checked up on them in a while. Just feels like 
All the air is getting sucked out of the room. Versus the flashback. The Carcosa sounds nasty and crazy and unusable at times, but at least it doesn't sound squished by some sort of weird filter. If you want to get weird, you can. If you want to pull it back and have fully usable sounds, they're, they're just sitting there waiting for you. Get into them. Uh, next up, a single knob fuzz from Walrus Audio. I've been a long time fan of this. It's a fairly tame fuzz, but if I'm looking to just throw fuzz on a board as, you know, like a texture inducing sort of thing before a bunch of delays and reverbs and stuff like that, I'll often grab this because I don't have to think about it. It's one knob, one switch for thin and thick. The, the knob just controls volume and that's it. <laughs> It's a simple fuzz. It's kind of a thin and bright fuzz, even on that thick setting. But sometimes that's exactly what I need. Onto the JHS. I actually really like this fuzz. From what I hear, it's technically a, uh, a circuit that's based on a fuzz face, but with some you know various tweaks, which is a common source for lots and lots and lots of fuzz designs. Lots of fuzz circuits start with a fuzz face. Um, but it's tweaked to the point where like, honestly, I never would have been like, oh, there's a fuzz face. Because often when fuzz faces are tweaked, they get crazy. I mean, think of the Fuzz Factory by Zvex. That's a fuzz face with just a pot on almost every component. <laughs> Let's check this thing out. that Velcro. Of course, you can bring back the, the bias and have a more kind of distortion style fuzz. But I like the bias.
Back to the flashback. <laughs> that broken sound. This circuit is based on the Fox Tone Machine, from what I understand. <laughs> Just a nasty, spitting, squishy octave fuzz. I don't even have it on the octave setting right now. Again, the underlying fuzz, the underlying distortion in the flashback is probably more traditionally usable than this crazy octave freaky, freaky fuzz here. But that filtering just ruins it. It ruined it. <laughs> If I want to have a filter over the sound of my fuzz, I'll do it on my own. I'll bring in my own filter. Or at least make it an option that I can turn on and off. All right, the last two. We'll start with the Frenzy by Rowan. These are the cheapy cheaps. These are affordable board fuzzes. I think they're both sub $30 or maybe just above $30. I don't remember how much the Rowan was. but they're just, they're both just beasts. I have a feeling I'm about to sell a bunch of these through affiliate links.
destroy your signal <laughs> for not a lot of money with a tiny little footprint. And that frenzy is ridiculous. Ooh, I forgot about the Behringer. I'll have to grab the Behringer. We got time, right? You got nowhere to be. The Kuvabe. so slightly more controllable than the frenzy. <laughs> Ridiculous. I'm gonna grab that Behringer. This is probably one of the most famous cheap fuzzes on the market. It's a clone by Behringer of the Boss. FZ2, FZ3, one of the super fuzzes by, uh, or hyper fuzzes by Boss, I can never remember. the super fuzzes you get two modes kind of like the frenzy but they're a bit more usable traditionally in a traditional sense than the frenzy and you actually get a secret third mode if you can balance the switch right in between the two which i think is actually a great sound and i kind of wish i could hack in a little switch that allowed me to select it more easily.
What do you think? Which one was your favorite? Which one was your least favorite? It better be the flashback. Anyone in the comments who says that the flashback fuzz is their favorite out of all these? We can still be friends. I'll still be friends with you. Just expect me to bring it up at parties. <laughs> Anyways, thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, dislike, leave me rude and nasty comments. Support us on Patreon. Buy a shirt if you want to. Um, and you know what? Stay grounded. Bye, everybody.